most Thanksgiving pageants about the pilgrims with their black hats and brass buckles? Well, after coming here for a visit, I now realize that's not what they look like. This is Plymouth Plantation, and by doing careful research, they were able to build a village just like what was here back in 1627. And actors play the parts of pilgrims so that you can really feel what it was like back then. Much of what we think we know about them is actually wrong. Some of those crowded on the Mayflower did come for religious freedom, but others came in hopes of making money. Early on, they made a decision that has had a big impact on our lives today. One that we should think of every time we use our cell phones or our iPods. Curious? Well, here's a play that gives an accurate picture of the pilgrims, with me playing someone, well, like me. Wow, look at that. Why can't we have a car like that? No, don't waste your film on that. My film? You know what I mean. Now, come on, let's get going. We're here to see pilgrims, not cars. Yeah, 1623, 14th of the spring, was David Thomas. So backwards. 1623, how stands the hour? There's six million hooks on here. Ah. Good day to thee. You've got to be kidding. I'm a pilgrim. If we're lucky, we'll hook up and chat with our ancestors, the Fullers. Haven't they been dead for like 400 years? Excuse me. Okay, that's Cape Cod Bay, and that is the meeting house, and I'm Samuel Fuller, the plantation surgeon. Surgeon, surgeon. Yeah, right. And wait, that's my house. No, that's my house. That's Andrea, Bridget Fuller, Bridget, Bridget Fuller. She knows where my house is, she's my wife. She should know where my house is. No, Goodman, I have come here in hopes of making my fortune. Some of the others have come to build a separate church, but not me. Our London merchants have paid for our supplies and shipped us hither. We are bound to them by covenant and so shall work together for them in common for several years. At the end thereof, we shall divide the land and our share of the profits. Sounds like apprentices completing a task for Donald Trump. Only that contract proved a miserable failure come 1623. Indeed. The results of which we need to pay attention to even today. We economists love you pilgrims. Dad, calm down. Say, could you point us to the Fuller Cottage? Aye, good man. Tis thither about a bow shot. Yep. We're foolish too, and we just want to say hello. Fair enough. Well, as you can see, I'm about to see the hen in the pot. And uh, good day, welcome to New Plymouth. As I was saying, I'm seething a hen, and here I'm starting a sauce for it with parsley and pepper. Where do you get the pepper? Well, it comes in supply from England. And the parsley? Oh, we grow it in our gardens. What else do you grow here? Well, Indian corn chiefly. Corn is what keeps us alive. Samuel? Uh, sir? Did the pilgrims... Uh, excuse me, did you own your own land or do you uh, share the property? Oh, no, 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 no. We share the land. <laughs> we share everything. It's always best to share, don't you know? <laughs> Are you sure about that? Are you trying to get yourself fired? What? My husband is jesting. Huh. Uh, well, don't you remember the harvests uh, before I come over in the year 1,603 and 20? 1,000 and... What? 1623. You wrote to me about how things had gotten worse and worse. Oh, I wrote you many letters, my dear. It's hard to recall when... <sighs> Help the guy out, Dad. Leeches! It seems I'm running low. I best get down to Yon Pond and find myself more. Ooh. My husband is the surgeon in this town, and leeches are very useful for covering and cleaning wounds. So... 1623 again. What was the big drama? Well, if that guy playing Samuel Fuller knew anything, you'd have learned that... Darn, I really wanted you to hear that from a pilgrim. I was here in 163 and 20. I can tell you what happened. I am so sorry about before, Andrea. Uh, Bridget, Bridget. We're on a break. It doesn't matter what you call me. 
It matters that you don't embarrass me like that okay. again. Okay, but what is the big brouhaha? I say Pilgrim share stuff and everybody jumps down my throat. It's just that we're here to dispel myths, not propagate them. The, the Pilgrims weren't just a bunch of people sitting around a banquet table saying, pass the stuffing. Okay, okay I'm here to dispel a myth too. The myth that I could ever get you to go out on a date with me. What? Okay, well, act real surprised. Ever since we met at the party, you know how much I've wanted you to. I was suspicious, but I never thought your sole motivation for being here was so that we could... You're unbelievable! And deluded! And disgusting! Don't forget that one. <laughs> Crash! Hey, look, there's Samuel. Just the man I want to see. Hey, what's... Poor guy. Uh, back at that cottage. What were you thinking? Look, I didn't say the pilgrims eat their young. I just said they share stuff. <laughs> Which is diametrically opposed to the invaluable economic principle the pilgrims taught us. It's what he teaches so everything gets turned into an economic principle. Even a trip to the mall. Hey, I'm just here to get Andrew Bridget Fuller to fall in love with me. Uh, no, noble. And how's that working out for you? Have you tried taking her for a ride in this sweet car? Priscilla. Priscilla's right. That is a really nice, sweet set of wheels you rode in here on. Yeah, she's my baby. Uh-huh. So, what do you say you and I swap cars for a year? What? Yeah, you're the guy who's always going on about how it's always good to share, don't you know? So, let's share. Okay, what are you, whacked? And what does swapping cars have to do with pilgrims? Well, what's the problem? Why don't you want me to use your car or however long I want to? Because it doesn't look like you take care of it as well as I do. And why do you take such good care of your car? Because I own it, I love it. It's... Oh, I'd love it too. I mean, take responsibility for it. Not let it rust out on me or fall apart like... Like mine. So, in short, what you're saying is you take such good care of your car because it's yours. You have a reason, an incentive to take care of it. An incentive, yeah. So what does that got to do with pilgrims? Priscilla? Here. In the fall of 1,620, we celebrated our first good harvest. But that November, a ship arrived with five and thirty more mouths to feed. So our governor put the town on half rations. By the spring, our food stores were used up, and people grew weak and thin. Some swelled with hunger. As the season approached of 1602 and 20, the elements for disaster were festering. Our workforce, already malnourished and still unskilled at growing Indian corn, and our system, where everyone shared the land and got an equal share come the harvest time, was beginning to show its flowers for it let an opportunity for some to take advantage and leave the work to others. Wow. Oh. So whether you worked your butt off or did nothing at all, you got the same percentage? <laughs> yeah, that's flawed. So Governor Bradford came up with a plan. He described the results in his diary. After much debate and with the advice of the chief among them, I, William Bradford, assigned to every family a parcel of land allowing each man to plant corn for his own household. This had very good success, for it made all hands very industrious and gave far better content. Sharing is a good thing within a family or with people you know who are in need. The results are usually positive. But sharing with strangers often has unintended consequences. So for the pilgrims, owning their own property was the incentive that led each of them to work harder and be more productive in a strange land. Yeah, you know, it's late, I gotta get going. Hey, we forgot to trade car keys. He's just messing with him. Come on, it's time we got going. I'm kinda interested in hanging out, seeing if the guy's gonna get the girl. Plus, I noticed there's a gift shop. The relics of the hen we had for a dinner have made a good broth for the supper I'm about to share with my husband. Samuel, could you remove those vermin from the table? Do you pilgrims share everything? At first we did. We thought it the only means to begin our colony, but instead it caused much confusion and discontent. And why is that, Samuel Fuller? Because it was thought unjust. There are always those who are willing to take advantage, let others do all the work, you know. Leeches. In the autumn of 1,603 and 20, we brought in a harvest that was more than enough to feed us. 
After such a success, we never returned to shared planting, but continued to plant each man for his own. Interesting. Yes, isn't he? Not it. So, how much did all this set me back? Sorry, but all this talk about private property got me in the mood. I think you're slightly missing my point. But at least Samuel Fuller learned something today. Now, if you could just take a few tips from him. Like what? Like how to treat a car. This thing is so embarrassing. Priscilla, people do not judge you by the kind of car Good night. you... Good night. Good night. Good night. You were saying... If I want to give something away, fine, but should I have to do all the work while some stranger who does nothing gets all the benefits? Sharing? Property rights? iPods? Do you see the connection? Would there even be iPods or cell phones without property rights? I don't think so, and I'm going to think some more about whether it's okay for me and my friends to download music without paying the writers and performers. How much would our lives change if we couldn't own things? There's much more to learn about the Pilgrims, and Plymouth Plantation is a great place to start. There's also much more to learn about the impact of these ideas.